first light beamed, letting Kaylin know that he somehow survived the night. His new coat felt heavy on him, like an armoured poncho. The sheathed dagger was strapped diagonally across his chest, handle up, as they wore it. They had shown him how to yank it out and slash in a single motion. He looked back at them. They weren't asking. He had to go. Kaelin was to return the way he came and arrive back home alive to evacuate the town. They were so insistent about evacuation. They instructed him to say, Rabid grizzlies had killed not only Dad, but everyone at the clinic, and more were out there. Hurry home, brother. Her nightly shapeshift gets more and more complete as the moon cycle progresses, McConnelly warned Kaylin, while glaring at Ivers. Three nights till the full moon, Monsignor. Even the bears got enough sense to run and hide during the full moon. That final thought mauled at Kaylin's gut as he fled. We had better find her then, Brother McConnelly, Ivers ordered. Soon. McConnelly watched Kaylin flee. He then crouched and pensively ran his hands over Kaylin's tracks. Kaylin eventually arrived back at the rock formation. The sight of the hideous claw marks on the rock turned his stomach. It had really happened. He had almost died. Kaylin quickly retrieved the gear he had abandoned and resumed his trek back home. He didn't get far before he stopped and turned. He gazed back at the rock formation as if it were calling him. He should have ignored it. Kaylin climbed up onto the top of the rock formation, winded and sweaty. He was searching the distance meticulously in all directions with his binoculars. After a while, he froze. His lips quivered. Damiana was frolicking in a lake. She was nude, graceful, happy, free, mesmerizing. Everything he wasn't. Everything he yearned for. He lowered the binoculars before he got too hard. There had to be another way than what the three psychos wanted to do to her. A cure had to exist. It just had to. Kaylin eventually arrived at the lake shore. You deceived me. She circled him, caressing each tree she passed, while glaring at his long, brown, armoured coat and silver dagger. Kaylin quickly realised how that must have looked to her. N -n no Unkilled by the Slayers? She asked with pleasant surprise or disappointment. He wasn't quite sure. What? You said you would help me. I will! You are one of them. I'm n not! She quit strolling about and hugged a tree. How can I trust him? She appeared to ask the tree. I helped you! Back at the chapel! I cannot trust him. Can I? She asked the tree again. You talk to trees? Once, I was in harmony with nature. Now mother hates me because of what I am. What she was. She was perfect. That's what she was, beyond beautiful. But he couldn't help wondering. What are you? He finally said, after some hesitation, conceding to his better judgment that perfection didn't exist. It was unattainable, at least for guys like him. What are you? She replied defensively. Damiana approached him faster than he could step back. She ran her sharp nails over his dagger, appearing both frightened and intrigued. She seemed to like him more. But why, if she thought him dangerous? Women had always been impossible to understand. You don't have to be scared of me. I would never be scared of you. They made me wear it, he admitted before he could stop himself. Why did he phrase it that way? Especially after her insulting tone. Was she calling him a pussy? Do you always do as others tell you? She asked, again with the insulting tone. No, no, he stammered. I do not believe you. 
Kaylin just looked down. Was she bullying him now too? What else did they tell you? He fixed his sights back on her, deciding not to take it any more. They told me everything, he fired back. Did they? Not really. They had told him almost nothing now that he thought about it. She resumed, hugging the tree. He noticed that the tree seemed to be slowly wilting, the one she was hugging. Damiana let go, looking more sorrowed than surprised. Her eyes welled with tears. What was going on? Yet, I fear only the Inquisitors can help me, she conceded. Now he was beyond confused. Help you? Those three psychos? By breaking the cursed pact which has so deeply offended Mother. What pact? What Mother? I do not want to be like this. I do not want to be what I am. You don't want to be what? An abomination. Kaylin's stomach sank, unsure if he ever really truly believed it until then. The tree had stopped wilting when she had stepped away from it. It is why I sought their help. Their help? You, you let those guys catch you? I will risk anything to find a cure, she replied with no hesitation. I will go anywhere. I will do anything. The Inquisitors believe they can break the pact, but they failed. It is time to move on and continue searching for a cure. Kalin clutched his brow, trying to grasp it all. He was in way over his head. She hugged him tightly. She was all over the place. Did she hate him or like him? She was so soft and smelled so good. Yet she could probably kill him any time with her sharp nails. She had fought the bears and saved his life. The same bears that killed the strongest man he had ever known. Dad. Then last night, the biggest, scariest bear and the three psychos had saved him from her. The lines were so blurred. He hugged her back. His eyes slowly closed as he buried his nose in her silky, burgundy locks. Her sagebrush-like scent relaxed and invigorated him. Where the Inquisitors failed, you will succeed, she whispered, and sealed her plea for help with a kiss. I know it. Kaylin nodded boldly, feeling like a real man. He loved how she did that. She made him feel strong. Everyone and everything else made him feel like a feckless weakling. Not her. Not in those moments. Moments he never wanted to end. She again kissed him and lured his tongue into her mouth, where she gently and affectionately nipped at it with her teeth. He knew how he would save her and make her his. She suddenly slipped from his arms as a misty red warmth hit him, just before the sound of the rifle passed him, which left his ears muted and ringing. He plummeted into dread as he fell to his knees, grasped her head and frantically tried to stop the bleeding. She had been shot. No! 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 Caelan screamed. Fear not them which kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Instead, fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Baudry preached, rifle in hand, approaching from behind. No! Had a feeling you'd lead us straight to her brother, McConnelly said, as he violently yanked Damiana away from Caelan and tossed her up and over his shoulder. No! Stop whining. She's incapable of love. She's just using you. And we saved you from her again. She's not some animal you could just kill. Kaelin jumped to his feet and tried to wrestle Damiana away. Baudry smashed the butt of the rifle into the back of his head, knocking him out. For we account a man to be justified by faith, without the works of the law.